Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm a visitor experience assistant here at Guelph Museums. I'm super excited to share this video series with you because it gives us the chance to go behind the scenes and take a look at some of the coolest artifacts that we have in our collection here at Guelph Museums. Today I'm back up in our textile storage area to take a look at some really cool artifacts. Now I won't actually be able to take them out because they're too big and too delicate, but I will be showing lots of pictures on the screen so you'll get a sense of what it looks like. We're going to take a look at Crazy Quilts! Remember to use the artifact worksheet to follow along as we answer our five questions. If you don't have it already, it's on our Museums Everywhere portal on our website at guelphmuseums.ca and it's linked to on this post. So let's get started. Number one, what is it? The artifacts that we're taking a look at today are quilts, but they aren't just any quilts. These are called crazy quilts and they're some of my favorite patterns of quilts. Quilts are a type of blanket that are made by joining at least three layers of fabric together by stitching, either by hand or using a machine. They're usually made up of three layers, the top, the batting, which is the fluffy soft material in the middle, and the back. I bet some of you even have a quilt at home right now. Quilts have a really long and interesting history. Some quilts were made to keep warm, some are beautiful wall hangings or decorative art objects, and some are cultural artifacts. Now we don't have time to go through the whole history of quilts today, so we're just going to focus on this one type of quilt, the crazy quilt. A crazy quilt is the name given to the pattern of the quilt. That's the way that the pieces of fabric are sewn together and how it looks at the end. The name meant that small pieces of fabric were arranged in a way that looked wild and random and crazed into splinters, but they were actually very carefully planned. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. This was a trend during the late Victorian period. That's the late 1800s, around 150 years ago, and they were especially popular among women who lived in cities and who were upper class because they could afford the silk and the materials needed to make the quilt. Number two, who made it? We actually know exactly who made this quilt, and the best part is that they were someone who lived right here in Guelph. This quilt was made by a woman named Elizabeth M. Marshall, who lived in Guelph in the late 1800s. Because excellent records were kept for this artifact, we know a lot about the person who made it. Elizabeth Marshall was born Elizabeth Marion Simpson on June 14th in 1869 to parents Thomas Simpson uh, and Agnes Scott. She married George Marshall, who was a grocery clerk, in 1894 when she was 24 years old. Elizabeth and George had at least seven children, Agnes, Alexander, George, James, Robert, John, and Annie. They lived on Harrison Avenue here in Guelph. She died on March 7, 1935, and is buried in Woodlawn Cemetery. Their son George would go on to own Marshall's Drugstore, which was located at 134 Wyndham Street, right beside the post office downtown. This quilt helps us learn a lot about Elizabeth and her family. We know that the trend of making crazy quilts reached Guelph and that the family was well off enough that they could afford the material to make the quilt. We also know that it was very important to the family. There are family names embroidered right onto the quilt. We also know that the family passed the quilt down for at least three generations before it was donated to the museum. It must have been very important to the family. Number three. What is it made out of? This crazy quilt is made out of silk, satin, and velvet pieces with a blue velvet border, purple satin back, and green satin ruffle border. There are lots of names and flowers embroidered on some of the pieces of the quilt. The names include Agnes, Alex, Lori, and Frank, and some of the flowers are Lily of the Valley, Daisies, Thistles, Ivy, Lily Pads, Cherries, and there's even a Union Jack. Knowing the materials of this quilt helps us understand a lot about it. Originally, crazy quilts were a way to use up scrap bits of fabric that might not have been useful in any other way. People didn't want to waste fabric because it was so expensive. But in the late Victorian era, quilting became more of a hobby, and women started to use quilting to express themselves, just like you might draw or paint today. It became very fashionable to have this style of quilt in your house. It showed people your skills and creativity, but it also showed that you had the time to make it and the money for the materials. 
silk manufacturers started selling kits of scrap silk and all kinds of other businesses would include silk ribbons for people to use. We have other examples of crazy quilts in our collection that used all kinds of silk ribbons in their patterns. Because materials like silk, satin, and velvet were fairly expensive, we know that the Marshall family had enough money to spend on this more expensive material. This style of quilt with this type of material also wouldn't have been very warm, so this probably would only have been used as a lap blanket or a decoration. That means that the family didn't have to worry about spending all their money to just try to keep warm. It also means that Elizabeth had enough spare time that she was able to create this beautiful work of art. Number four, when was it made? This is a really interesting question to answer for this artifact. We know from our records that it was made between 1895 and 1905. We know that crazy quilts became super popular in the late 1800s in North America. And that's because people were starting to see art from around the world, places like England and Japan, more and more. It also became more affordable to buy silk and satin. There were also articles, magazines, and literature all about how to make your very own crazy quilt. It was a huge fad. Making and owning a crazy quilt showed how fashionable and trendy you were. We also know that in the early 1900s, the fad started to fade away. Random patchwork didn't disappear though. That was still a really good way to use up lots of pieces of fabric that you couldn't use in any other way. But quilting became more about making blankets to keep warm than about decorations. So this quilt fits right in the middle of when crazy quilts were all the rage. Number five, why did the museum collect it? This is a great example of the type of artifact that we love to collect here at Guelph Museums. It helps us learn about what daily life was like for people living in Guelph at different times. We have an excellent example of a really cool trend that was popular in the 1800s right here in Guelph. We can also learn a lot about the family who owned it and the life of the woman who made it. This also helps us get a glimpse into the past. We can learn about Elizabeth's life and her family's contributions to the city. These objects that were made and used right here in Guelph are some of the best ways that we can learn about life in the past. There are a few places that we mentioned today that you can go and see for yourself. Why don't you and your family go for a walk around the city and see some of the places that were parts of the Marshall family's lives? You can go for a walk down Harrison Avenue and visit Sunny Acres Park. You can go downtown and visit Hungry Ninja, one of my favorite restaurants, and the business that is now in the building where Marshall's Drugstore used to be. You can even go to Woodlawn Cemetery and enjoy a nice quiet walk. Did you know that Woodlawn Memorial Park is the only cemetery in Canada on the Trans-Canada Trail? Get out there and explore Guelph. Don't forget to join us next week when we examine a whole new artifact from our collection here at Guelph Museums.